welcome to the world's first black nerd empowerment podcast with the boy, the TV girl 108. If this is your first time listening, you can find us at swarthynerd.com. We are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Swarthy Nerd. We're also on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. Um, Yuki's out this week, so it's just me, chilling at the grip. If you like that beat in the background, that's from Burn Water. I'll leave it down in the description below. Everything to talk about will be down in the description below. So today's topic is about pattern recognition. So I guess I'll just start off right there with the pattern recognition. But let's let this beat ride. I like this beat. What is pattern recognition? I can't get the word out, Jesus. Pattern recognition is exactly what it means. You're seeing a pattern and you're recognizing it. And this is what this episode's basic about. Um, I've been living 31 years of my life, and I can tell you, man, you you are blind if you don't see the bullshit that's going on in this goddamn world and in this country. But um, let's start off with um. Hold on, let's just pause this. Let's get started with Trump. Trump was at the goddamn UFC fight a few weeks back. Um, that's that's the thumbnail you're gonna see is Trump at the UFC event, and people are always trying to tell you tell me that I'm wrong about everything is not about race. And it clearly is. Why would Dana White, he's the um, creator, founder of UFC, bring Trump into this, into the UFC fight? Yeah, he has a right to see whatever you want to see. But you notice they are showing you that, hey, that's his fan base. White supremacist. White supremacist is his goddamn fan base. And I'm not mad at him. It's just, it's... It's clear as day since day one. The UFC has always been about white folks. They barely let niggas win and they hold fighting tournaments and all that shit. And you gotta put the you gotta put these patterns together. You gotta notice that, huh? Why the fuck did they invite Trump? <laughs> Think about it. Think about the first place Trump went when he became president. The first country he went to is what? What country? Japan. He went to Japan first because he know Japan is sort of what number I think number two, number three power in like the world. Well, he like they have like most like GDP type shit. Like they they balling our earth. He went there because man, Japanese people they honorary Asians. I saw this um this thing with uh Bill Maher. Actually, I can pull it up since I'm on a damn computer. So let me go. Uh, let me pause real quick and I'll pull it up. All right, found it. All right, um, so let, let's listen to this real quick, and I'm going to give you a little breakdown. And let it be known, Bill Maher is a white supremacist. He's one of these liberal white supremacists who think race is old and we need to get past it. We, need, we, are, we are all one human and all this bullshit. But Bill Maher, he's a racist, and he's been showing his colors for the past couple of years. I was a huge animate fan. Animate, animate, yeah, I think that's the right word. Animate fan of Bill Maher. I used to watch his show every freaking week, but slowly the cracks start chit- uh, chinkin, chinkin. I hope that's not racist. <laughs> uh, you can definitely tell like what he's been doing. So um, let me play this clip from his new rules. Um, 
I'll put I'll put this down in the description below as well. Um, but yeah, check check the listen to this. I'm gonna pause every once in a while so I can tell you what the fuck he trying to say. Um, I've been telling Yuki for a while. Um, Yuki can attest that like man, when they talking about woke shit, they talking about you. And I feel bad. You know what I'm saying, and now I feel like I'm just uh, jocking Professor Black Truth and Jason Black. But I swear I've been saying it. I've been saying it for not before them. Well, before them, but I ain't, it's, I ain't get it from them. <laughs> so um, yeah, check out this clip. I'm gonna play a little bit of it. Please don't make the Olympics into the Oscars. Oh, what's that? They they did already. <laughs> yeah. You know, back in April, when the Oscars aired, I commented in this space that the theme of that evening was, we dare you to be entertained. <laughs> Lest your mind waver for a few hours from thinking about the sad things and bad people in the world. Well, thank God we found some of those bad people in the Olympics now, and not a moment too soon. The director of, <laughs> no, that, that was sarcasm. <laughs> The director of the opening ceremony was fired hours before, what did we, before the event because they found out there was a Holocaust joke in a comedy routine he did decades ago. Okay. No, the, all these things he's going to bring up is Japan focused. And that, that's not being woke. See, once again, when they use woke, they're really talking about you. Yes, it is um, a lot of ridiculous political correctness going on in this country right now. But this is from Japan. Japan, guys. He's bringing up shit that happens in Japan. Okay, the Holocaust joke. You know why they said some shit? Because there's a lot of Jews who run shit. And they, and they know it. In Japan, they were siding with Hitler. That's what you're not going to hear Bill Maher say with his witty self and smarty self that his writers wrote. They ain't going to tell you. Oh, yeah, they were sided with Japan. So this Holocaust joke really was out of taste. And Jews don't play. They lucky they didn't take the whole fucking Olympics from their ass from this shit. <laughs> but anyway, let me continue. Well, you know, context is everything. Obviously, it didn't strike people as beyond the pale at the time. Young people have to stop flattering themselves that they're Nostradamus and would have foreseen had they been around then everything that's unacceptable now. And for further context, Mel Brooks wrote one of the most successful musicals of all time around the song Springtime for Hitler. And once again, what I say, Mel Brooks is a Jew. They figure out a way how to profit off their suffering. Straight up. See, that's what black folks, we need to be on. We need to be pushing this shit harder than ever because these motherfuckers, these Jews, they, 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 they don't let you forget. They don't let you forget so bad they made a fucking musical off of it. But let me know, that was a Jewish man. That that sort of don't even make sense why he brought up Mel Brooks doing a fucking play called with called the producers that, that it don't really make sense to me. Bring why would you bring? Yeah, I understand he's Jewish. He did it, but that just shows once again how much white people because they're Jewish, but they're still white can get away with a lot of shit. So of course he's not gonna get in trouble. Shit, that's that's a, that's an Americanized fucking movie that motherfuckers like in America. Like once again he's out. How, he just don't understand. He's talking about Japan news. Japan's very tight with their shit. But anyway, let's continue. Why do we allow the people who just want to bitch to always win? Days before that firing, the opening ceremony's musical director musical director, was also forced out because someone dug up an interview with him from 1994 where he admitted to bullying classmates as a child. As a child. Remember when your teacher used to try and scare you by saying, this is going to go on your permanent record? <laughs> yeah. No longer an empty threat now. <laughs> and the... And the creative director of the entire shebang of the whole Olympics got shit canned because he once made a fat joke in a private conversation. These news articles he getting from, as you'll see in the video, he got it from NPR, the New York Times. These are all liberal leaning, sometimes right leaning news agencies. They, 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 like basically, these articles is what's pissing off him. See, white people they can't take any goddamn thing type of fucking um sort of bringing up niggas past because they're afraid they're next. 
That's why they're trying to cut this from the knees right now. This political correctness, the wokeness, they're trying to do all that now. So no one can hear him. But let it be known, this dude is being, he's a, he's a, he's a puppet as well. Don't let these people make you think that he's not. Now, the, the plus size pig thing. Once again, this is Japan. These are news, this is news that they're putting on their goddamn fucking news uh, websites. Come on, man. You don't have to click on that dang article. The headline alone makes you roll your eyes. See, this is just an excuse to attack black people. Don't, don't fall for this joke. Don't fall for it, man. This wokeness is you. This is called a purge. It's a mentality that belongs in Stalin's Russia. How does this Stalin. atmosphere we are living in have to get before the people who say cancel culture is overblown admit that is in fact an insanity that is swallowing up the world? It's jokes, lame. I'm back, not the audience. I'm back. First of all. And that is not a conservative position, my friends. My politics have not changed, but I am reacting to politics that have. And this is yet another example of how the woke invert the very thing that used to make liberals liberals. Snitches and bitches, that's not being liberal. The Associated Press is a real news organization, yeah? So why am I reading this headline? Olympic surfing exposes whitewashed native Hawaiian roots. Yeah, the Olympics added surfing this year. Good, surfers deserve to be recognized as athletes. I'm sorry. What I meant to say is, no, that's cultural appropriation. The AP says that for Hawaiians, probably all two of them, including surfing in the Olympics, is an extension of the racial indignity seared into the history of the game and their homeland when white outsiders took over their spiritual art form. See what I mean? These are articles written by white folks. See, most of this woke shit that he's talking about was written by white people or non-FBA motherfuckers. <laughs> we don't give a shit about this, and the best believe Hawaiians don't give a fuck about this shit. This is white people being extra. See, what's pissing them off is this is how black folks feel when Karens fuck with us, when cornball white boys fuck with us, bitching about cornball ass shit, asking if you live in this apartment building. Oh, um, do you have the right ticket or pass? Like, come on, man. This is just annoying-ass white people, and now you're annoyed. Now you know how we feel. Anyway, let's continue. Or just people having fun in the ocean. <laughs> I must say, of all the violations of the woke penal code, cultural appropriation just might be the dumbest of all. First of all, there are 25,000 islands in the Pacific. How do we know a Hawaiian was the first to stand on a board in the water? Because they claimed it first. That's why. <laughs> it seems like something anyone in any ocean would eventually get around to. Not really. Most people probably would make like a boat or something. No one was really thinking about the board and riding it and shit. But hey, that's Bill Maher for you. And if you're a surfer, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, or in between. You all taste the same to sharks. <laughs> but, but let's say a Hawaiian did invent surfing. Should he or she have kept it to themselves? Most of human history is a horror story but the good parts are about different groups coming together and sharing. It's sort of the whole point of the Olympics, which, which itself comes from Greece, where wrestling was invented as a way for completely heterosexual men to get to know each other. Badminton has roots in India. Tennis comes from France. Skiing from Scandinavia and Taekwondo from Korea. Judo was appropriated from the Far East and skateboarding from the far out. <laughs> what is this new rule that the first thing to do, that the, the first to do something, are the only ones who get to have it? Jewish? 
all that we're trying to say, what, what I'm trying to say is, is, yeah, acknowledge who created the shit. We, people get tired of motherfucking white people trying to dominate in every goddamn thing. When black folks, we've been running shit for a minute when it comes to sports. But white people, when they start doing it, it's all, it's the rage, it's the shit. Remember, um, surfing really didn't become popular until white folks started messing with it. Hip hop wasn't popular until white started fucking, start fucking with it. You see what I'm getting? You get the pattern I'm getting to? It only starts popping when white people use it. And then it's all, and then it turns into a white sport. Like hockey was invented by us. Now white people do it. And they don't let niggas even in there. Okay. People spend most of their history wandering. But when they see other people milling around, they don't say, can you not? That's sort of our thing. <laughs> That's twice he brought up juice. You know, change is not synonymous with progress. Newer doesn't automatically mean better. This new idea that each culture must remain in its own separate silo is not better. It's not progress. And in fact, it's messing with one of the few ideas that still really does make this melting pot called America great. Not everything is about oppression. Stealing natural resources from indigenous peoples. Yes, of course, that is exploitation. But I swear, not one Beach Boys song resulted in any Hawaiian having less waves to surf. Man, these, this dude, boy, he's lost like a motherfucker out here. I don't even want to listen no more. Actually, I got like two um, two minutes left. But I don't even know if y'all want to Do y'all really want to hear the rest of this? No, I don't think y'all do. Let's move on. But, see, since shit like that. Like, and guess who's all this people and can join, and like, Bill Maher, he is like the the liberal white supremacist. And then you got Trump, who's like, you know, the white ring white supremacist. All these people connected. Like, if you really want to do it like a six degrees of separation, this dude, Bill Maher, had people on like Jordan Peterson and all type of ridiculous type of people on his show. But meanwhile, we'll have a single fucking black person on there anybody who's what they so called woke on his show he had a few people on his show like um who was it um i think it was pitbull yeah pitbull he was on there and he was like man all these politicians they fucking dirty they fucking do people dirty um actually you know what no i don't know what i'm gonna look for it i'm gonna look for it lucky for yeah i found it well, this is from 2016 in October. Um, like I said, I used to watch Big Mom every goddamn week, man. But yeah, watch how Pitbull try to talk real shit about politics and Bill Maher try to shut him down. Check this out. It's a long one. A little long. Probably two, three minutes. But check it out. Uh, Pitbull, why did you get involved in the charter school movement? Oh. Well, I mean, for the simple fact that it's real simple. A lot of people are not what we're talking about right now. You know, we, we, we're talking about a lot of things as far as change and you know, when it comes to politics and politicians, I call it politics. I think it's a lot of bullshit. They say a lot. They do a lot of a whole lot of nothing. So when it comes to the kids, if you're able to tap into a young mind, teach it how to believe in itself, focus, work hard, inspire it, motivate it, then guess what? They're able to grow and make educated decisions. So therefore, my mother always told me the biggest diseases in the world, the two biggest diseases in the world, ignorance and greed, which we see we're suffering from it right now with Trump running as we speak, you know, I want to be able to show these kids, hey, as you get older, at least you know the decision you make, you can stick by it but because I, you know where you, me, you were well informed. Let me push back a little on something mm -hmm. you said there about politics. It is politics. Mostly what they do is nothing. I think that's a very dangerous message because that makes people just turn off and go, oh, they're all alike, they're all full of shit. Actually, here in California, we have a Democratic governor and we have a Democratic legislature, mm -hmm. so we've been able to do great things. When politicians actually want to work together and you have the right ones, mm -hmm. they do things. And that's a reason why we had Medicare before, before that. Yeah, I still think they're full of shit, to be honest with you, Bill. And, <laughs> well, and, uh, well, but see how he's standing on the shit? You see how he's standing on the shit? That's what I'm talking about. Bill don't like niggas coming on there. Not Bill was a nigga, but he don't like white people. When people come on this motherfucker talking real shit like that. Like, man, fuck what you talking about, nigga. But... But watch, then he gonna, I don't know if this is the same clip. Watch him, watch Pitbull basically fuck everything he's talking about. Watch this. I mean, himself. Like, he's like, well, you're right. I'm like, oh, man, you let this dude beat you? What? Well, listen, keep listening. 
But, but you know I mean, what? Look, maybe I you mean, need maybe me you need you to, may, maybe from a different side of tracks, you, you know. To, so therefore, into, I call maybe you need to get into the details. And what I'm trying to tell you, no, and the devil's in the details, and I know the devil is my motherfucking cousin, to be honest with you. But with that said, <laughs> this, but, but like, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Look, when, when politicians they come out, they talk a whole got a, you know a great game. And mind you, we're talking about climate change. You're talking about what they did for California. But, we're talking about California. What they, they're in a drought but, right now. But Armando, right now, there's no water Armando, in Armando like, let me just tell you something. So, and California is not that great. Like, what the fuck? Is, it's a mass exodus from fucking um, uh, California. Come on now. California's run like shit. Man, if y'all don't know, if you if someone broke into your house and you shoot them um, uh, while they're leaving your house, you can go to jail. You shoot a warning shot in your house, you can go to jail. California's fucked and everybody's leaving. Anyway, continue. Before, before Lyndon Johnson came along, and you know this better than I do, and passed Medicare, uh, senior poverty, mm -hmm. old people. He talking about Lyndon B. Johnson, the, the white supremacist of white supremacists. <laughs> the fuck he talking about? Like he was a fucking godsend. Yeah, he did a lot of things for like people and shit, like black folks and all that type of shit. But he only did it because JFK died. People who lived in poverty because they didn't have pensions and stuff was something around 40%. It reduced it to something like 9 Okay, that's well, actual change. That's something Florida. that I can't speak about because I don't know the details on that. that I that's what I'm telling you. But but then, even think about what you're saying. Then don't say hey. they're all full of shit but and they don't do anything. Think okay, so I'll tell you this much. Charter so let's, let's get political about this shit. Majority of them are full of shit. <laughs> so, well, well, then don't vote for those. <laughs> but <laughs> but you, have to, you, have to, you have to learn who to <laughs> vote for. Think that's a dangerous thing because that says if they're all full of shit, then Hillary and Trump are equal. I mean, that's... This, this country ass motherfucker is from the fucking Bill uh, Clinton regime. It's this fucking, I forgot his name, something Carville or some shit. He next, next to Mark Cuban and some I think British fucking guy. I still don't get why British people can talk about our fucking politics. Like, what the fuck do they know about our shit? But anyway. That's a dangerous and that, thing. And it's no, very right. dangerous. We gotta make it, Armando what Bill is saying. These niggas saying that's dangerous because this nigga saying all politicians are full of shit. They are. They trying to tell you during Hillary and Trump who to choose. Man, get the fuck out of here. Both of them was fucking dirt. Nigga, these motherfuckers want to pick a lesser of two evils. Nigga, that's evil. Stand on your shit, pit bull. Stand on your shit, man. I agree. You can agree. say that many are full of shit. I'm with you. Uh, I, I, I like just that. said that. But majority they, of, the, the stands, they are majority the of them full of but, shit. And I just think right. that but, politics but, has become a propaganda. I, as we see it right now, I watch Hillary and I watch Donald Trump. And it looks like the fucking WWF. It but looks you, like... Woo! You're calling for some propaganda. It's, it's not. You're calling for some propaganda about charter schools. That's, you know, that's what you're... It's three niggas trying to get a pit bull to get him back on his to the senses. Because he see a lot of the young people listen to him. They trying to get him to say, no, politicians ain't all them bad. Nigga, if they do, get the fuck out of here. These motherfuckers on this same show, Bill Maher, the politician straight came over and said, man, 90% of our job is just fucking campaigning for money. Man. It's an article I posted back way back in the State of Our Society episode where they straight up say that, man, this country is an oligarchy. You only get shit done by having money. Money talks. The Supreme Court has said money is actual speech. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all need it, man. Man, these motherfuckers think we dumb. It's called about pa pattern recognition, man. Gotta understand these patterns so you don't sit out here being looking dumb. But all right, let's continue. You're saying about charter schools, I'm afraid, is the bullshit that you're, you're denouncing. You know, you look at the places in the world that have schools that are doing really well. They do the opposite of the charter school privatization model. Think about Finland. What they do is, which got the best schools in the world, they fucking pay their teachers really well. That's what we should do. Oh, fuck feeling. I agree 150% with you, by the way. And if you were to look into our model, our teachers are very well incentivized. But this is more than anything. This is about flipping education and... and and making it exciting for the kids. Sure, but the countries that now, I agree now, that you can do school, that within a way, public school system, that places that succeeded have done that without the partial yeah, privatization. Not, not everything you need to Excuse learn me. is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Uh, and that's me... why we flipped it with, with, with sports. That's why we flipped the curriculum. If we're talking about data, data analytics and they're, and they're in the algebra or their geometry, whatever it may be, they'll, they'll do... Um, they'll do fantasy football. They'll do... If it's X, Y, Z, then we'll do... Hey, it's a 60-yard line. 
X amount of time on the clock and they need this many points. Like, we find a way to make it exciting. We flip the curriculum. That's why it's called SLAM, but, sports leadership. Right. I agree, but you've got to do that within the public okay. system, not this it part of the public system. system. But it's not. This is the not public system. 90%, 92% of the kids in my school are on free lunch, my friend. Sure. These are all the ones that yeah. come from the neighborhoods that I come from, which is Little Havana, my friend. Of course, there are admirable, and they come there from are admirable schools. individual charter schools. Now, look, hey, you look I come from a neighborhood that so don't talk about it, be about it, partner. That's all right. No, it's real shit. Uh oh, the pit bulls. No, real shit come out he trying to Bill Maher trying to calm down. People like man, y'all pull the shit up here. <laughs> He's not gonna bite. He'll hump your leg. But he yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on that mode, that might touch his foot. That might touch his foot. I was hoping that happened back then. Oh, oh, Armando. No, but here, listen to this. Now your governor in yeah. Florida, Rick Scott. Oh man, huge yeah. asshole. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did he make his money? Medicare. Cheating. So a, a, a state with mostly retired, not mostly, but like the largest percentage of retirees, elect a guy who cheated old people. A state that is in danger of global warming elected a global warming denier. And part of Obamacare is a Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Republican governors blocked it. Mm -hmm. Now, when they voted for the governor last time, if they had voted Charlie Crist in, he would have been down with the Medicaid expansion. And something like 800,000 people in that state would have gotten health care. Mm -hmm. 800,000 people don't have it because they elected this asshole. And the, you Bill, see, yeah. the devil is really in the and, details, and, right. and it affects personal and this, lives. I will openly when somebody needs health care now, yeah, all those people, they cannot get and it. And one thing on my end, guys, I want you to understand. Bill March from over the healthcare shit because he near the age of healthcare. He about to get retirement. He about to be sixty fucking five. <laughs> That's why he's so adamant about Medicare and healthcare right now. This nigga about to fucking die. I'm a person that came from nothing to something. I really don't understand a lot of things. I'm learning as I go. Dude, don't dumb yourself down because these motherfuckers beat you in submission, man. Fuck that, man. Stand on your square. And I'm the kind of person that admits when I'm wrong. I'm the kind of person that admits when I don't know certain things. And I get thrown in the world of politics. See what I mean? He dumbing himself down, man. Fuck, dude. What, man? Stand on your shit, man. Fuck. I don't even give a shit about Pitbull like that. But, man, see what Bill Mark do? He break motherfuckers on his damn show and make them believe in the bullshit he talking. You know, I get thrown in this world because they feel like they, they want to, you know, pull in our culture and they want to, obviously, they, they, they go for that vote. So there's a lot of things that I'm learning as I go, and I'm always and here for advice. Yeah. But, but one thing I am is very, very passionate. All right, no, so yes. all right, me, all right, so Pippa, let me just make a point. You know, I just, just want to make sure you guys know that I'm far from perfect. Oh, my God. He's looking sad, innocent. In my state. Man, fuck that shit. Mark Cubison right there ain't saying shit. You know why? He's like, man, I'll buy a motherfucking politician. What the fuck? <laughs> that's why Mark Cuban ain't speaking, but that's the end of that. I just want to prove my point. I ain't lying. That was fucking 2016. I remember that shit. That, that, that's round them's cracking and breaking the crack of Bill Maher. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker full of shit. This motherfucker should look full of shit, man. And look it up um, on Bill Maher, like, YouTube channel. You'll see the highest videos are the white supremacists. Okay. Anyways, move on from this Bill Maher bullshit because it's a pattern connected to Bill Maher. Uh, most people on his shows, man, are people who is the uh, as uh, Kwame Brown says, the go along, get along game. This is what these motherfuckers do. Um, what's connected else connected to this pattern recognition? Let me. Sorry, I got to pull it up on my phone. Got it pulled up. Uh, oh. But yeah, the Trump UFC shit, motherfuckers really need, really need to peep that shit. Like, that right there should prove everything. Like, okay, and who connected to the fucking UFC? Joe Rogan. Who Joe Rogan have his show? Most white, well, all the white top, like, intellectual biggest, the white supremacists you see. Come on, man. Y'all better stop playing. This shit real. When you hear these little white boys on YouTube quoting these motherfucking white folks, you better, better be checking it. Anyway, the next thing on the pattern recognition is the Olympics. Um, I was sitting back watching the Olympics for the past couple of weeks now. Um, man, these motherfuckers was on some whole ass shit, man. NBC, fuck you. NBC was on some fuck ass shit. So, me and Yuki been like, uh, after we get done recording, we'll go up to, uh, you know, go to my crib. We'll, we'll like start watching some, my, my YouTube subscription. I'm subscribed to a bunch of shit, but I'm subscribed to NBC Sports and all that shit. I don't give a fuck about sports, but um, I'm like, I care about the Olympics. Olympics is the shit. I like the gymnastics, the skateboarding. Well, not skateboarding, but just the gymnastics mostly. And I was rooting for like Simone Biles, basically all the black girls, black men, all the black FBA motherfuckers. I was rooting for these motherfuckers, man. They purposely did 
did not show no black people winning. Man, if y'all go to NBC Sports YouTube channel, man, all they showing is fucking other countries winning. When they're supposed to be an American goddamn shit, yeah, Olympics is world shit, melting pot bullshit. But man, you're supposed to be showing America's doing shit. These motherfuckers uh, bigging up Asians. First Japanese man to do this. First Asian to do this. Uh, fastest Jamaican runner. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's America? What are they doing to America? Attacking us. You go to that channel, you're not going to see a single clip. They'll have a Simone Biles in the thumbnail, but when you click on that thumbnail, they got to earn it for 30 goddamn seconds. They are talking about, they bigging up the white folks in these Olympics. Man, they purposely try to knock our, our, gym, our gymnasts off their game. Jordan Childs, um, they fucking did some dirt on her a few weeks before uh, she, like, they start performing, like, the teams and all that shit. They showed some fucking video clip of the fucking mom. Um, basically, uh, she been swilling people out of money and shit, man. It was some fuck shit right there. Boss, swear to God. Um, let me pull it up so y'all can hear it. All right, here we go. Yeah, man, look at this bullshit right here. They dropped this shit um, right before they start performing. They start digging up bullshit about her fucking mom. Like, they, they understand. Man, sports is a mental game. Your mind got to be on point, too. It's not just being physically better. You got your mind got to be on point. But check this shit out. Once the Olympics start next week, a U.S. gymnast from Vancouver, Jordan Childs, may be a household name. But her mother getting notoriety for a much different reason. And this is something our Dan Tilkin is investigating. In fact, it's why Gina Childs was prosecuted for stealing more than a million dollars, Dan. Yeah, so on the same day that Jordan Childs is supposed to compete with Team USA for the overall team trial, her mom is supposed to report to federal prison. Now, court documents say she admitted stealing from her clients, say she spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on personal expenses. When things get tougher. See what I mean? Yeah, I heard what they said right before she about to start. They're knocking people off their goddamn game. They did the same thing to uh, uh, Simone Biles. But y'all want to, we can, we can listen, listen, we can keep listening. It's a short little news clip. For people don't believe in you anymore, um, that you just keep pushing. We talked to Gina Childs last month while her daughter Jordan. Was and Mama White. Look white. St. Louis about her children's book, Dream Big, Little Chick. I came to the story during a time where Jordan was not really feeling gymnastics. We didn't know then that Childs owes three victims more than $1.2 million. Federal court papers say one lost $945,000. Carla Perlstein. Somebody that has absolutely no shame. She is an operator. I mean, she is a total operator. Court papers say Perlstein rented the Victorian Bell Mansion in North Portland to Childs to run as a wedding venue. Pearlstein had previously helped Child start Inspire Vision Property Management. And court documents say, over the course of nearly four years, Child's embezzled from clients. And Child's had stolen so much, she could no longer cover the resulting shortfall. Maybe she's a uh, Hispanic. Money around. I just happened to lift the flap of her copy machine, and I realized that she was falsifying bank statements. She had a key bank statement and she was like taping over the numbers on the statement to to show what she wanted it to show. Hi, Gina. Uh, this is Dan Tilkin uh, with Coin TV. Ah, fuck this. I'm done. This type of shit I'm talking about attacking black folks to to get knock them off their game. And maybe Jordan Charles ain't black. She looked black. Shit, she half something. Her dad ain't around. <laughs> they ain't talking about dads. So shit. God damn, man. This motherfucker, these motherfuckers ain't shit, but knocked her off her game. And then they fucking knocked uh, Simone Biles off her fucking game. And who gets the gold and individuals? Um, the Sonny Lee girl. And they, and, and you know why they did that, right? Because they didn't want black folks winning and start bringing up for my people. Note that. They don't want you to, they don't want us winning because they know that. They know when black people we win, they were going to start bringing up shit. Now, you know, let's just clear this whole shit out. Let's make sure these niggas don't win at all. And meanwhile, you see clips of like Sonny Lee, them talking about her, her Hmong roots and all this other shit. Like, what? Man, if y'all don't see this shit is not orchestrated, if y'all don't see this goddamn pattern going on that they orchestrating and fuck black people up forever, y'all better stop playing. 
Man, that was the most dirtiest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. These motherfuckers did this shit on purpose. Anybody dark was not winning <laughs> in America. Now, these motherfuckers purposely fucked up a black people to let an Asian girl win, which I don't problem. Sonny Leah, goddamn, she's good, too. She's really good. But, man, you, you can tell, man, they, they wanted to do that shit. I like the idea that um, Tariq said, man, she just saw the racist shit and said, fuck it. You know, I got my goals. And I feel her. If that's how she felt, man, fuck them. Shit, these motherfuckers trying to fuck you over. They're not going to get us, though. Fuck that shit. But yeah, man, Olympics is full of racist ass bullshit. Those are the racist Olympics I've ever seen in my entire life. Just checking out every black person they possibly could. And everybody know about the Shakari Richards bullshit. Just, man, these motherfuckers was dirty. They was dirty this motherfucking Olympics year. Like, they didn't want no niggas winning. Because they know showing niggas win is going to motivate niggas to be more and do more. And they know they know if they would have won, we would have said, man, this is for, you know, Mike Brown. They, they, they wanted to eliminate all that. They didn't want to bring up no racial nothing. They want they was bigging up Asians. It's the whole thing, man. They trying to big Asians up right now, cause they trying to under, they trying to make them the new class of white supremacists and have the Hispanics be the second class citizens, and we still gonna be at the bottom. Man, this pattern is ridiculous. Y'all better stop playing. What's the next thing? Oops, sorry, I gotta pull it up. Doop. Oh. Yeah. So. I really don't give a shit about this story, but it's part of the pattern. Um, the ba- the the baby bullshit. So the baby was fucking on on stage, and he says some shit about um. I don't want to misquote. Let me um let me look it up. All right, this is exactly what he said. If you don't, if you didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that make you die in two or three weeks, put your cell phone in the air. That's all he said. But people attacked him on some he a racist and all this other shit. I'm like, what? Because he said some shit? Man, get the fuck out of here, man. We got everybody named Mama out here talking shit. We got goddamn, um, what the fuck that uh, thing at? I'm sorry, I'm scrolling. Um, yeah, you got um, Quest Love talking shit. See, once again, man, I'll be trying to tell y'all, man. The Roots, man, Quest Love, all these motherfuckers. These people hang around liberal white folks, man. These celebrities in Hollywood, they hang around these white folks. We can't, none of these niggas walk anymore, man. Ain't nobody walking Hollywood. And if they are, they hiding it. I understand to keep a little paper, but man, what happened to these, like, celebrities and sports athletes who actually fucking willing to sacrifice the shit? Motherfuckers say, I ain't gonna be broke for you. Well, nigga, you ain't understand the cause that Muhammad Ali was doing or fucking, um... What the fuck is his name? Shit. I forgot. All them niggas in fucking one night in Miami. All them people who actually put their career on the line. Some of y'all niggas don't know how to stand up for shit. God damn. Y'all niggas supposed to be banging 24-7 on motherfucking all this shit, man. Now you got fucking Quest Love trying to talk shit. Talking about who the fuck is this guy, the baby. I don't even give a fuck about the baby. I don't give a fuck about his music. Nothing like that. Because a lot of y'all don't understand. It's not about that. It's not about the person they're, they're talking about. We are a fuck. It's a proxy. They're talking about all of us. So instead of sitting there and trying to take the shit, y'all should actually be fighting back. Now, they want to get on the baby about bringing up if you had AIDS. That shows, man. Hit dogs holler. We did a whole episode about that. Hit dogs holler. Why are they attacking this man because he just said if you had the AIDS and all that shit? It's because half these motherfuckers do. Let's keep that shit 100. A lot of these gay motherfuckers, man, they be raping each other. They have fucking all this ridiculous amount of sex. Yeah, we have, um... Um, they, they, I don't, they don't really, shit, I lost my train of thought, <laughs> just that quick, <laughs> oh, shit, but man, they motherfuckers are gonna attack this man over some AIDS and bullshit, y'all understand, okay, they wanna attack you for that shit, but they wanna attack you for, uh, basically, it wasn't, it wasn't even bad, cause he was basically talking about have safe sex, <laughs> what's wrong with having safe sex? Hey, Cause you know why? Cause half these motherfuckers are gay, who and they have promiscuous sex. Now they got these motherfuckers in the Olympics, um, shitting on you know Simone Biles. Black people got too much testosterone and all this other shit. Meanwhile, they got trans in the fucking thing. They got a white girl talk bragging about how she smoked weed and still in the Olympics. Man, these motherfuckers, man, y'all don't get it. Y'all really, y'all truly don't get it. These motherfuckers are out here. Trying to get it, get us at every fucking level. 
Like, y'all be too distracted by those anime and video games and TV shows when y'all need to be focused on being black first unapologetically. Make these white folks feel uncomfortable because they don't give a fuck about making you feel uncomfortable. You see all that shit Bill Maher was saying? Shit. He made Pitbull uncomfortable. <laughs> see, because he unapologetically white. It's so many things that Bill Maher has been talking about, like um, white pride and all this other shit. Like, man, y'all better stop playing, man. While y'all sitting here fucking trying to like and retweet all this cornball ass shit, you should be liking and retweeting some of this new black media. And spread their propaganda. If y'all want to call it propaganda, everything's propaganda, but shit, let's push our own propaganda. Let's promote black black families and black love. God, boy, y'all, man, this shit's ridiculous, man. Like, goddamn. So, my motherfuckers try to tell you that you're being racist and you don't know what you're talking about. Just tell them, man, this is fucking pattern recognition. That's all I'm doing. I know what they're trying to do. They try to knock everybody off that game, man. Man, fuck these motherfuckers. Straight up. But, man... I've been knowing ever since I was a kid, man, this racist, racist bullshit has been around. And a lot of white people say, man, get over it, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, don't be hung up on it. But, yeah, you got to be hung up on it because, man, that's how they judging you. They use you as one big nigga. One nigga fuck up, everybody fuck up. You don't see a poor Asian person and you think, oh, man, all these Asian motherfuckers poor. But they, that's how they look at you. Y'all really need to study Neely Fuller and Francis Quest Wilson. They break all this shit down, man. White folks, they got a, a parent, uh, child type of mind frame to, towards you. Next time you hang out with white people, see how they talk to you. See how they talk to others. They truly think that black people are just these dumb, you know, don't know, no good kid. Man, y'all got to peep this shit before y'all fucking fall for it. It's sad. Man. But ever since I was a kid, I noticed all that bullshit, man. Just, man, these white people, boy, they, they think you're a charity case. And you ain't gonna get me. When this country breaks you, they really fucking break you. Like, we need more, we need more black people speaking up and speaking out, man. Like, it's a damn shame that y'all think being a coon and make it, making white people feel comfortable is the only way out. It ain't. It is power within you bringing up stuff. Shit, don't let these people scare you into not wanting to talk about race or bring up race. Because, hey, these motherfuckers want to act like, like funny style, but, man, all these other countries, they ain't showing. Hey, the dark-skinned people treat you like shit. Bill Maher ain't going to bring up how in the Olympics they said you ain't going to talk about that Black Lives Matter shit. Of course he's not, because he think that's wokeness. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't have that there. This is supposed to be about sports. That's how they're going to think it. No, we do need to bring this shit up, man. China just don't want to look like assholes because they know damn well they treat their dark-skinned motherfuckers, aboriginal motherfuckers like shit. They damn near wipe them all fucking out. All these countries are black folks. America's not a fucking melting pot. It only became a melting pot, pot after black folks built the shit. Then it became a melting pot. Whereby saw us a come up to come out over. Man, fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. These motherfuckers, boy, y'all just don't fucking know. That Trump, when I saw Trump walking in that goddamn UFC shit, I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers telling you. This UFC shit ain't for us. <laughs> we can still dominate that motherfucker, but let it be known, man. Y'all gonna run, run, walk around like a hardcore white supremacist. I mean, white supremacists listen to Bill, um, to fucking um Joe Rogan. For real, Joe Ro- Bill Maher is sort of like the Joe Rogan of fucking <laughs> of like the liberal shit. For real, man, these motherfuckers, man, I ain't for the fall for the fucking game. But yeah, uh, shit, I really don't have much. Yeah, so I guess um. If y'all want to send us some questions, send us some questions at uh, swortheinternetgmail.com. We, we love to answer some questions. But, man, I ain't for the fall for the shit. I'm sorry. Shit, I, I know I said it like a thousand times already, but, man, we, we truly got to understand these motherfuckers are at war with us. And we got cornball black people bringing up Asians before themselves. 
act like they, they this this propaganda was so fucked up. These motherfuckers made you think the Asians was being attacked. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> Asians ain't been goddamn attacked. Yeah, it's been attacked in a few cases in New York City and California. Fuck out of here, man. These motherfuckers trade major. Everybody think that they're, that they're being attacked and they about to... They need legislation to help them. Jesus Christ. And, I, and everybody's so concerned about like, damn, what the fuck? We was getting attacked and no one gave two shits. Yeah, because you guys keep rioting and looting and destroying things. It's not us, though. We got plain clothes officers fucking under, uh, uh, hiding in, in between starting shit. Get people from other uh, states coming over here starting some shit. God damn, boy. And you try to tell a white person this, they, 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 they be so, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, of course you don't because you don't think. Because all they think is I'm white and I say so. If a black man telling me he clearly has some ulterior motive. For real. That's why white people, that's why you don't see, uh, you know, white people sharing Tariq Nasheed, but that's your Bill Maher or Joe Rogan clip. And I ain't even saying Tariq, it can be any new black media. It's the whole point is like, it's no balance. Have some balance, man. Shit, you can have whoever you want on your show, you can listen to whoever you want to listen to, but man, you gotta have a fucking balance. Because I can check a Bill Maher clip out and still listen to Tariq and them. And peep all the bullshit that Bill Maher is saying. Shit, Joe Rogan too. It's so many clips of Joe, Joe Rogan being racist. You be like, God damn. That's why the white boys like him. Because he has those thoughts and ideas how white people think. Because I'm telling you right now, white people don't hang around black folks like that, real black folks. You hang around like a lot of non FBA motherfuckers. They ain't hang around on real black folks doing real shit. No. They ain't even trying to do all that. Hey, let them do what they do. Shit, I don't know what the hell's to tell. Them. I guess we can go into. Well, I want to wait for Yuki because Yuki's out, out for right now, just for this week. He'll probably be back next week. Um, I want to talk about some shows that I was up to. That's our next segment is what we've been up to. Um, I ain't really nothing. I really want to talk about. I really didn't watch much. Yeah, I really didn't watch much. Yeah. Oh, I guess I nah nah. I'll wait till you can come back. We can talk about the shows and shit. I don't want to pull it down down even more. <laughs> but things we uh, uh been up to and shit because he probably been to a lot of shit too. Um, but shit, I guess I can end it right here. Shit, this is gonna be a short episode this week. Um, you know, I gotta bounce ideas with off with Yugi. <laughs> uh, but shit. Tell me what y'all think of this pattern recognition. Um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna do some more episodes like this, man. Some, some like solo ones on my YouTube channel. So check me out at uh, the TV Guru 108. Check that shit out. Um, yeah, check that shit out. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of shit off there now. Um, but I've been up to shit. I just shit just moved. So I'm in a new location, so we should have better audio now. Um, my audio has always been good. I, I, the first couple episodes, I wouldn't. Say it was that great, but um, our audio's better now. Um, it's gonna be ten times better now. So get look forward to that. We're gonna do more. We're gonna start going live more. We're gonna have more guests. Uh, where was that last time recording? It, it really, really tired up a lot of things we supposed to have been doing. Like we couldn't really do much there, but uh, now we can do a bunch now. So get ready to support the nerd two point <laughs> Um. But yeah, uh, all the clips we bring up will be down in the description below. All uh, all our information will be down in the description below. Um, follow us on um, all the social media stuff. But definitely share the podcast on YouTube. Come on, we gotta get those uh, their subscription up to a thousand so we can start going live uh, more frequently. So get us to a thousand. Everybody share that shit. You wanna find me? I am the TV Guru One Hundred Eight on YouTube. I'm Super Lost Fan One Hundred Eight on Twitter. Um, on Instagram, I'm the TV Guru 108. Um, fuck with us. We'll see you guys and gals next week. Later.